All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in uh, to the Bucket List Review site. Uh, my name is Paul, and I'm here, and I'm sitting down talking with Mr. Mark Jensen over Skype. Mark, man, how you doing from Epica? Mark from Epica, of course. <laughs> I'm great. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay, man. I just ran back from work real quick to go make this interview on time. But uh, yeah, like I, I kind of imagine, are you doing a, is this a press day for you? Uh, you are the last one. And oh, last. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. So I'm extremely tired. But well, you're uh, you up. always, yeah, I'm, I'm warmed up. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cyclist. So we, we never get tired. Only <laughs> Guys who work out with with weights, they get tired after uh, after some hour. <laughs> press press days are another kind of uh, another kind of cardio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, do you do you enjoy doing this part? I mean, like uh, every time you you're starting up a pre- uh, an album cycle, like there's always press days, and especially for a band like you guys, like you're you know you guys are of a certain stature, it's definitely a lot more involved. You know, so like you have to dedicate a lot of time to this. Like, do you dig? You know, you you enjoy like spending your you know a couple of hours uh you know for a, few, a couple of hours a, well maybe not a day but uh, you know extended periods of time talking to the press and almost like yeah. answering the same questions over and over again. Yeah, but some questions are the same, and of course, the, some questions are, are after a while a bit uh, uh, boring to answer. But but usually it's it's fun. Yeah, and also when you get to travel to Paris to London. Uh, you have like uh, eight hours interviews and then you go to uh, nice restaurants with with the guys and uh, to eat and uh, I must say I I like that so so first you meet a, a lot of different people and it's always always nice time to chat as well and then in the evening you 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 uh, have also a good time because then you are really relax and, and and get to hang out with uh, with the guys from, from the office so it's uh, it's fun yeah, that's a whole other experience too that I've never actually done is like doing the, the the travel press or anything like that. Like, and I'm used to just sitting at home doing the Skype thing. It's a lot less picturesque than going to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you have to do only phoners day after day, and can maybe get a bit uh, boring. But if you actually get to travel, and and then the variation of that, it's it's fun. But I must say, it's is uh, with this album, I I never had to do so many interviews as with with this uh, album but like if you if you put the days in a, in, a, in a line then you are like halfway so i'm still fresh uh, yeah. yeah that's definitely a good thing it means you know it's going to be plastered all over every bit of press that uh, that's out there man it means the album's going to get the the publicity that it needs everybody like, will know that we come up with a new album good that's the way it should be <laughs> What's the, uh, just out of curiosity, I just thought of this is like, what's, what's the most unique question that you've heard today that somebody has asked you? Do you remember, if you can remember off the top of your head? Yeah, somebody was, was asking about uh, how, how the, the, our, our title, the, the holographic principle, how that would work with, with dreams and, uh, and uh, galaxies far away. So I could go really wild on that question and, uh, that was the most fun one, and I think I talked for for ten minutes uh, about just on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, uh, well, we're definitely going to dip into that a little bit later on too. But she probably did a little more <laughs> more research into that question. I'm I'm painting a little bit more broad strokes here. But then again, I'll let you if you want to talk for another ten minutes on that. Then uh, I'll let you go. Well, you go well, as much as you want. So, all right. So now that since we're you know we're getting this going, um, I mean let's let's talk about the new album, the Hallback Graphic Principle. Um, so first and foremost, like you know, we're almost at uh, the end of the marathon. The album's about to get completed, but w- are about to be released, I should say. Um, so when was it that you guys first started laying down some of the material for this record? Like when you first started twiddling around with ideas and uh, and riffs and concepts? Um, it, yeah, it's, it, uh, it was for most guys one and a half year ago um, when we when we start. No, no, short. It must have been. Uh, one year ago, but for me personally, I started one and a half years ago. Well, because I, I write whenever I feel inspired. When there's not really yet uh, nobody talked yet about a new album, but whenever I feel inspiration, I sit down and, and I I write music. And then I, at that point, I don't know yet if it's for Epica, for for Mayan, or mm, for, right. for other project. But uh, uh, then, like uh, about one year ago, then we said together it's time for a new album, and then most guys started actually writing music. 
but then I had already this this uh, file on my computer where I could get a lot of songs. Uh, yeah. So I, I I used many of my ideas from that folder on my on my desktop, and uh, uh, they turned into uh, new Epica songs. Yeah, that's cool that you had a you know, had a long head start on that. Yeah, yeah, it was and just not like, really... you guys want a record. Well, looky here, boom, a couple of gigs of music. <laughs> I, I mean, were you were you starting mostly with music, or did you start throwing together some lyric and conceptual ideas also around the same time? I mean, do you write like I guess you kind of write the same way when it comes to music and lyrics, where whenever sort of inspiration hits you, you know, you got a, your little notepad and yeah. you're ready to take it down. Yeah, yeah. I also have an idea for lyric. I always write it down and on my my laptop or in my phone. And the same I do with it when I'm in a train, for example, and I have a nice melody in my head. I record it on my phone, and that uh, that's also a huge file of all like of little snippets. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it works well for the lyrics because then when you have a really nice line that that comes to your mind, it can always be a starting point for a whole lyric. And uh, so we 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 never think really about uh, a whole concept before the music. It just happens. Yeah. It evolves, and then at a certain moment, you have a main topic, and then, um, yeah, it just grows and builds something that, that, yeah, exactly. That's cool. Um, when it comes to the writing, especially the music, um, have you guys, uh, has there ever been like, um, let's say riffs from like a previous record that uh, was laid down but didn't fit or didn't make the cutting, the you know, didn't make the uh, like a previous album that yeah. that was still good that maybe you guys transferred over to, to uh, you know, a, a future record? Does that ever happen? Yeah, the, the Universal Dead Squad song on the new album. That's that's a song that we was originally written for the Quantum Enigma album. Oh, cool! But, right. but it was uh, at at that point it uh, was a completely different song. It uh, it had some of the of the riffs that are now in the song, but it was uh, way more com complex and uh, it was uh, a huge amount of riffs, way too many. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so uh, it was rewritten, and uh, now it, uh, it did fit suddenly very well. And uh, so it, it, sometimes it, it takes some time and some extra time and some extra work until a song is finished. Also, a song like uh, a Kingdom of Heaven uh, back in the days, it was uh, it took uh, three or four years to finish that song. It was really... Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> sometimes it, uh, it's like uh, wine. You have to... Put it on the shell and then later on take it off and time and pay food. That's it. You get, you know, you, you get to come back to a riff or a song with a new perspective after a little bit of time, you know. Like I <laughs> I, I, I don't feel as bad now with any of like my bands. It's just like, well, it took him three songs to do, or three years to do a song. Like, okay, so we're, we're not that bad, I guess. <laughs> but it took us a year and a half. Or, oh, God, we're going on five years to put out a record. I'm not going to say anything about that. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, it's also helpful if some songs are a bit uh, faster evolving <laughs> than one and a half year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you went into the, uh, when you guys really started going full kick into the writing of this album, um, were you writing with any particular goal in mind? Did you want to make it more grandiose? Did you want to make it darker? Did you want to make it faster or groovier? Uh, like any kind of premeditated, uh, you know, inspiration or, um, or goal involved going into this? Yeah, well, when we started writing, the, the, some some guys have mentioned something like we wanted to put a, make it a bit heavier or a bit more uh, tra trashy riffs in it. But there was not really uh, a goal uh, that we said, this is the way we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Everybody started writing. And then when we were having enough songs, we were coming together, see what, we, what we've got. And then we, we were saying, I ah, these songs really fit well together. There were also songs that were uh, not fitting in in that in that uh, uh, bucket mm -hmm. of songs that we felt like that they were right. There were also some songs. One song was was really uh, cheesy. And that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that started nobody, sounding uh, like heat, and then it's like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> was, was, was almost Justin Bieber like. <laughs> 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 so we said no, we're not gonna do that <laughs> but you have no, but, to though you have to record it and put it out on like april fools or something like that like you can't maybe maybe in two years it suddenly feels good <laughs> just just do it <laughs> just do it for the i fans. cannot imagine but, but maybe 
<laughs> but yeah, that uh, it, it wasn't a bad song, but uh, my my grandma would have loved it. That's a pro- yeah, and there we go. They can't go on the record. Uh, after that. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, do you have uh, do you have a favorite song yet on the um, uh, from the record? Um, I think my favorite is Divide and Conquer. It's, okay. uh, it's, uh, heavy. It's, uh, it has, has a, a really, really cool, uh, breakdown riff, uh, in, in the mid part. And, uh, I think it, it has basically everything what, what, the, uh, the, the, the new epic, uh, should have mm-hmm. still all the old ingredients, but with a, a new, um, more modern sound. Uh, yeah, heavy, and uh, yeah, that that song I really also love to to play it live. Uh, we, even though we didn't play it in front of a crowd yet, but I'm uh, playing every day uh, the, the the songs uh, to rehearse them for the for the for the CD presentation, mm-hmm. and that is the one one of the the ones I play the most, just because it uh, it's so much fun playing it. Yeah, it's good when you just feel it, especially in the jam room. Like you know immediately that it's gonna work. You know it's gonna yeah, work yeah, live. Exactly, you know? exactly. And then Universal Dead Squad is also such a song that I really enjoy playing it. And uh, uh, I think that the, the holographic principle, I, I like the way it has turned out. But that one, I still have to start practicing. So uh, let's <laughs> see how much fun that will be. But it's a it's the longest song, so it's uh, one that I push a bit uh, ahead before I start uh, rehearsing that one. <laughs> Get on it. Uh, yeah. so, and um, so the last couple of weeks, you guys have been releasing uh, the studio documentaries on YouTube, which I absolutely love because like, I love seeing behind the scenes footage. I love watching, doc- I love watching music documentaries. Like, like my favorite, um, like I love watching a year and a half in the life of Metallica. That's like one of my absolute favorites, but like, I'll stop it after the studio stuff of the studio footage. When they go into their touring, I won't watch anymore. I'll just watch this. I could watch the studio versions like forever and ever and ever. Uh, cause it, I mean, it, it offers a really awesome glimpse into the creative process. Um, but for you guys being there with, with the, you know, the, the cameras, I mean, I don't know how, like maybe, maybe they were kind of in and out, but, um, you know, did it feel odd having the cameras there kind of tailing you around as much as they were? Because, you know, the studios are very, it can be a very intimate, you know, space and time for yeah, people, you yeah. know, and it's yeah. not, it's certainly not every, not every band welcomes that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a little bit camera shy, I must say. Hmm. Whenever there's a camera, uh, I, I love to film myself instead of being uh, the one to be filmed. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I know it's, uh, it's, it's needed and, uh, it's it's very interesting for people to have a, have a view, uh, but I'm also always happy when uh, the cameras are turned off and uh, I can be completely back in my comfort zone again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it, I have a hate love hate relationship with the camera. Yeah, I mean there, there was the uh, I forget which I forget what was episode two or episode three when you were laying down vocals. I, I would have, oh man, that that made me nervous watching. I'm just like, I would have never been able to have done that. Like, that's the one that's being in the booth is just that's my, yeah. my space. Like, no, no other eyes allowed. If the engineer wasn't even there looking at me. It'd be, it'd be better. <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing is the, what I allowed. And then it's indeed not a guy with a camera, but he, he put his camera there. Oh, OK. OK. So while you forget there is there's actually a camera. So that then it works for me, but I also would not like to have a guy with a with a camera standing there. <laughs> that wouldn't work for me either. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, I mean, we got we uh, like the world got to see got our first taste of the new album in the in the uh, Universal Death Squad video, and it sounds great. Um, it's it sounds like Epica, which is fantastic. It uh, I I felt like the the orchestrations were very pronounced in it, and I loved the production sounded fucking perfect uh i like the style of the music video how it was sort of um a hybrid of a performance video and a lyric video at the same time was that somebody's idea did one of you guys like have pitched that concept or uh was yeah, that like an outside I, idea yeah we, we work already for quite a long time with uh, jens the, the, the guy who shot the video from mm-hmm. panda productions and he's making also these making off videos uh He's doing uh, tour footage. Uh, he's, he's, he was the one who made these studio uh, documentaries. And uh, he feels very comfortable working with. And that's also, we know him already for, for uh, now some years. So when there's somebody allowed to get into our studio, it is somebody that we know already. 
not some complete stranger who shows up and says, hey, I'm going to film your documentary. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, the, together with him, we, we discussed and uh, we didn't want to make just a, a normal, a regular lyric video because the, right. everybody's doing the same thing already. Yeah. And, and, and in the beginning, it was, it was something new and exciting. But now when you see another lyric video of a band, you think, oh, there we go, there we go again. But when you make something interesting out of it and shoot an actual video uh, underneath, mm. then it's it's, it's uh, still interesting, I think, and uh, that's what we tried. And we uh, we made a really nice setting, and we, we played the song uh, that day uh, during the day a couple of times, and that worked really well. Yeah, it looked really relaxed. It looked like we were basically watching a very high quality footage of you guys jamming. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, that that was also the way it was meant to be. It, yeah. All it, smiles, but, and everybody's happy to be there, and. <laughs> Yeah, so so not metal <laughs> yeah. for, some, for, for, no. for many people, and they say that's so epic. <laughs> so non-metal, so epic. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, in the, the song itself, like I mean, one of the things that obviously is a really is a big plus for the 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 lyric videos is that. Uh, you know, you get, you know, like sometimes like you can listen to songs and the lyrics kind of go in one year out the other. And, you know, when they're actually right in front of your face, you actually have to take, you know, you're, you're, you're reading them. They're right there. So that, I always loved that about the lyric videos before just, you know, everybody was doing them ad nauseum and then just stopped paying attention a little bit. But, um, you know, the song, the song itself, Universal Death Squad, it seemed to have this uh, dark futuristic technological dystopian theme to it i suppose i, I don't know you could definitely yeah, describe it better than i can but yeah, with that kind of, yeah. uh, oh to the good old uh, terminator uh, movies and uh, also uh, universal soldier mm -hmm. and uh, by then it was really in a uh, uh, futuristic uh, doom scenario but nowadays the technology is already there that uh, robots can have the self-determination to kill and uh, I think it's just a matter of time until these, these, guy, these guys start working. <laughs> yeah. You're painting a doom and gloom scenario for the future. I love it. This is perfect. Yeah. It's, it's, You're more it's, metal than the, some of the death metal bands. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love doom scenarios. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with that being said, um, I mean, let's get, in, let's get into the, the, the concept. So... Um, in in your words, like what would you say that the holographic principle is about? Yeah, it's it's a very fascinating theory, uh, and uh, I, I saw a lecture by Leonard Susskind about uh, he's also called the bad boy of physics. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was such thing, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, he, his lectures uh, is really uh, inspiring. I, I would say check them out, and uh, the way he he also is talking and explaining the, the difficult stuff and it's really revealing and, and, and interesting. And then when I, when I approach it with an open mind and I started thinking, well, after a while, well, well give it a try. Maybe, maybe the, the, the universe is a hologram after all. Yeah. And um, because already when you think about the, the Earth uh, being uh, so small and a huge amount of space uh, going with high speed and uh, uh, swirling around in the universe, around the sun, mm -hmm. with uh, millions of other galaxies around, that's already wicked enough, right? Yeah. So to, to, uh, to, to think about the universe might maybe just being a hologram, it's not such a far step uh, to, to take, such a big step to take. Everything is, is possible. And uh, yeah, I, I learned to be open, to keep an open mind because... Uh, uh, Already so many things, like I thought as a kid was the way it was, uh, appeared not to be the way it was. Yeah. So I'm not surprised anymore if, if the, 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 the universe really, after all, is a, is a hologram, just an illusion. And uh, when you look at it with true virtual reality eyes, um, when you are uh, putting on such a virtual reality mask, and uh, nowadays this technique is already quite good. And, yep. uh, yeah, you feel it being like in a roller coaster or whatever. And uh, imagine in five to ten years, uh, these this technology is much better even, and you you are you can find yourself in a world similar to this one, and you cannot notice the difference anymore. Then you realize, well, maybe this this one that we assumed was real 
is after all a virtual reality on its own as well. Yeah. Um, I would, you know, it's funny. I was listening to, um, uh, another pod, the Joe Rogan podcast, and he was talking to this gentleman named Duncan Trussell and he was, um, he's like a big proponent of the whole VR, uh, the, the whole virtual reality thing. He's got like the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, HT, is it HTC goggles and, um, uh, the Oculus and whatnot. And he was, he was talking yeah. about developing, or he was talking about trying out the VR goggles in, in a float tank. Have you ever done like the, the, uh, sensory deprivation tanks? Where, where, I, I no, it's like when you're in a, t- when you're in a tank full of, um, of, wa- of water that has a lot of Epsom salt in it. So your body is like completely buoyant and, uh, the water itself is your own body temperature. So you don't really, you don't feel the water at all and you just float there and it's supposed to, it's, it's, um, you know, it's used for, for meditation. Um, but he was talking about, you know, developing like VR goggles to go in there and, um, developing a VR program that basically like puts you in space. So basically you'd be wearing these VR goggles in a float tank, not feeling your body in fucking space, you know, and like, that would be the absolute trippiest thing. And like, and like you said, like, you know, in the, the way the as fast as technology sort of developing these days, it's like why, like it is not so far fetched to think that like in 10, 15 years from now that, you know, our wildest uh, science fiction dreams could become science fact. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And, 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 and I think actually then it's, it's possible that this, this whole universe is already a uh, science fiction fact. Uh, wow. <laughs> that is already science. That is already uh yeah a crazy dream that we are in yeah maybe we designed it ourselves and 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 being in in in, uh, in a physical shape here just to learn from our, ourselves uh, yeah. i think it must be something like that because uh otherwise i i, I doesn't make really sense to me what what this is <laughs> <laughs> and that's it like and I've, I've you know i've listened to a couple of uh, like a couple of uh was it talks on, on YouTube and whatnot about uh, quantum physics and whatnot. And some of the theories that they, they, they talk about are just so beyond comprehension that it's like, you know what, anything that we've come up with in our own imaginations doesn't even bear, like it barely, you know, uh, it, it hardly seems uh, like well, our imaginations don't even compare to what's actually going on, let the, what's actually yeah. happening and like the scale of the universe and whatnot. So it's like, well, you know what? Basically, anything's possible these days. It's kind of yeah, like if you, I, <laughs> so it's like if you yeah. watch like BBC Earth and you see like some of the creatures that lives in caves and it's like, these are fucking aliens. Like, like <laughs> fuck science fiction aliens. Like this is the most wild shit and it's right here on our planet. Yeah. And then I also, I, I read a book, uh, from a guy, he was for his first 18 years of his life. He was uh, everybody thought he he was uh, uh, having a, a big. Uh, he had some some oxygen uh, lack of oxygen when he was born, and people thought he was uh, having the mind of a of a three year old when he was 18. But actually, what people didn't realize was that he was very smart. But he just couldn't communicate. He just could just, just could sit down and, and and move his eyes a bit. But in a way, they they made him uh, uh, made it possible for him to communicate. And and he wrote a book uh, once. He it was possible for him to to also write, and then due to uh, the help of, of of other people. But then he, it was possible possible for him to write. I read that book, and the title of the book was "Nothing Is What It Seems." Nothing is what it seems. Okay. Yeah, it seems I, 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 to be it's what it seems to be, and uh, so he says really literally everything what you think here is real is, is an illusion. Hmm. The, the the what on, the only thing what's really important he says is love. That's the basis of everything, and all the rest is an illusion. And that, that a guy that people thought until shortly before that was the guy with the mind of a three year old. And then suddenly it was it was really for me an eye opener that that book was really fascinating. Wow, oh, man, I really want to check this out now. Shoot, cool. yeah, it's written in Dutch. I don't know if they. If oh, they, really? Uh, I hope there's an English uh, translation for it because I'd, I'd really love to delve into that. Man, that's yeah. interesting. And it's interesting that he, also, that he also talks about how like the only thing real is love. It's like you know we boil everything down to like our basic uh, emotions and our instincts. Yeah as humans and like this is where the science this is where at the uh, inevitably where science and spirituality are going to 
kind of converge, you know, like at its, it's not in, it's not in the books. It's not uh, in the dogma. It's just like at its very core, like, okay, what, what is all this about? And this is where these two things are going to, are going to come together eventually. I hope, I hope, I, I, <laughs> you know, where it becomes so. the, that, that's the most, yeah, I, I, I'm sure it will come together like this in the end. All right, let's skip. All right, let's talk more, more Epica stuff. So who kind of went on that, went on that for a little bit, but thank you, actually. I pre- yeah. appreciate that. Um, I, okay, so I want to talk about, uh, okay, so what you guys have coming up, you guys, because you guys have a lot of shit coming up. Um, so first and foremost, let's talk about the Epic Metal Festival. So yeah. last year was your first one. You guys debuted last year, correct? So it was with um, yeah. Elevati, Fear Factory, Sepultura, Periphery, and a bunch of other yeah. great bands. And this year you guys are bringing it back for not one but two shows. So you got one in Tilburg in uh, the Netherlands, another one in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, and this is like your festival, like this is Epicus Festival. Um, so, what prompted you guys, like, what prompted you guys to do this in the first place? Because this is a huge undertaking for anybody and any band. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So, when did when did it start? When were the seeds of this festival first planted? The the idea started already many years ago, but we never had the time and uh, energy to, to actually make it happen. But uh, when we organized the retrospect show uh, uh, for the DVD recording after 10 years uh, celebration, Mm -hmm. we knew we could organize something big. And we had uh, gotten uh, experience because of that show. And we thought, let's now try to take this old idea of uh, getting our own festival and try to make it happen. And uh, that first edition, if it would have been a failure, was would be uh, also our last uh, epic metal fest but it turned out very well and uh, the people are happy the the everything went smooth and uh, we thought yeah then we're gonna keep on going and make a second edition and then as we never want to do two times exactly the same we we thought let's do one in netherlands and one in brazil and uh, if that goes well as well we will after this do uh, another new step and uh, take it Maybe to uh, uh, Mexico or United States. Uh, You're answering all Canada. my questions before I can ask them. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Sorry, but you can do the, no, ne- it's do perfect, the next. Though. I love it though because it's great. Like that's that's uh, yeah. You answered a whole bunch of questions for me, but that's perfect. Um, cause I was gonna ask, like, man, you know, if this goes well, so are you gonna come over to North America? You know. Um, I mean, speaking of uh, the cities that you chose, but we take it with oh, step by step. So step by it's, step. Uh, yeah, if if, uh, if it doesn't go exactly like the way we were hoping for, we also know that we, we have to take a step back. Yeah, did it you all choose... depends on the edition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, did you choose uh, Tilburg and Sao Paulo specifically because there were strong markets for you guys? And it's like, okay, well, if we were going to do it in any cities, you know, these would probably work out because you got good draws there. I'm only assuming. Yeah, the Tilburg Netherlands is. Uh, we we did our very first show in that in in that venue. Very first, like very 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 first. Support, like, yeah, very 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 first. That's the really? support like the uh, anathema. Yeah, or really our very very very, no very, very first. <laughs> That's so and sentimental now, uh, and awesome and cute. Yeah, now I love it. <laughs> yeah, and then because it's uh, see, our, uh, yeah, Netherlands is the right place to do it. So. That sums up the, that uh, venue together with uh, uh, the presentation. And Brazil is another story. That, uh, we were thinking where to, to do the, the international version. And as we did already uh, Hell and Heaven Fest in Mexico, Mexico was uh, not an option. So the, the, mm. uh, together with Mexico, Brazil was also uh, the, the, the first country that came to our mind. Then we saw, they said, then we're going to do it... Uh, in Brazil and uh, uh, yeah, Brazil and Mexico are two of the biggest markets for us. So I, th- I think that would be then the, the most obvious choice. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you guys were going to do it in North America, what cities? What what like what's your top three cities? You think you might put them on? Like uh, New York, mm-hmm. Los Angeles, or Montreal, uh, Montreal, or. Or Montreal or Quebec City. <laughs> or Quebec City is pretty badass too. Yeah. I should I should hate Toronto, but like they're pre- they probably be a pretty good Saskatoon. show. Too. Saskatoon. Saskatoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Nothing against anybody listening from Saskatoon. <laughs> Not the uh, most obvious the, choice. <laughs> would it wouldn't be the most uh, uh, the first choice for the epic metal fest, but uh, uh, it, it still came to my mind. <laughs> Shout out to Saskatoon. Still many, we still have many fans in Saskatoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will see. We'll see. <laughs> You're gonna get so. Uh, are you guys playing Saskatoon in its upcoming North American tour? Like, uh, I think so. yeah, yeah. I think so you're gonna. You're gonna I mean, we might get some pissed off people going like, "Yo, what are you talking shit about? Bring it, bring it to Saskatoon." It'll be a challenge yeah. now. Um, people will know our, our sense of humor. Yeah. Saskatoon. Uh, so yes, you I did. Oh, piss sorry. you off. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys excited to come back to North America? So yeah, you guys. Uh, when is oh fuck? When does that tour start? That's pretty soon. That's in October, November. The, yeah, the North American tour with Flesh God, The Agonist, and Zandria, and I think Arcona is on yeah. some of those dates too. Oh, exactly. Zandria yeah, and Arcona are switching off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then and the Flesh God Apocalypse. Yeah, that's a good lineup. The Agonist, yeah. you guys, you guys bringing the Agonist on everything, and I love it. Those are my boys. It's great and girl. <laughs> yeah. First, first we had a, we had another favorite band that we always like to bring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. We'll oh, get, we'll get the back name? And again, what was the name of the band? Blackguard. Blackguard. Black Black oh, yeah, those fuckers. <laughs> New record coming soon this year. Yeah, when, when when guys are cool, we 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 want to bring them again. And and also with the agonists, they were in the unfortunate situation previous time that uh, the tour was cancelled. Right. Not yeah, yeah. Cancelled for all bands, but at least for us. And so uh, we said, let's uh, ask them again. And uh, that's cool. Now, that's solid. Oof, for us. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I wanted to ask. Like, there's a lot of in the last couple of years. Like, there's you see a lot of European bands that are kind of shying away from hitting the North American markets. And I don't know, like they just can't can't make it work. It's getting too expensive. But you guys are still getting bigger and bigger. Well, it seems like you guys are getting bigger. Like, how how yeah. do you guys like touring North America? Like, it's it seems like you guys are doing pretty damn well from what I've seen. So. Yeah, the, the reason is that many bands are uh, go, less bands are coming over. Uh, first of all, the the, the taxes situation. Uh, yeah. No, not taxes to the state, but the the financial taxes. Uh, before it was uh, it was it was uh, yeah you could tour and you, you could uh, 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 how you say that uh, avoid paying a huge amount of taxes. Mm -hmm. at Nowadays, it's impossible. You you uh, you need to pay thirty percent, or you need to be uh, an American company or, or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know exactly. I don't have exactly the knowledge, but uh, it's for most bands. It's it's quite impossible to organize all of that uh, or pay the thirty percent and and uh, yeah, be bankrupt or right. or uh, uh, yeah, almost no bands are, are making then money over there. So most bands uh, start skipping North America for that reason, but fortunately for us, we 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 already we have a lot of experience and uh, we also know uh, how to to uh, to deal deal with it. And uh, uh, we have uh, bookkeepers uh, who are uh, uh, having our company there and know everything and what to do and how how to have everything work in the best possible way. So we can come over and without uh, uh, having to pay the thirty percent. Uh, so we uh, do it the, the the legal way. But uh, for what for, for mo most bands, it's way too much work. Mm. So that's I think the problem. And uh, also the visa situation. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, it's a big pain in the ass every time to get your visa, and uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of paperwork, a lot of money. Uh, you have to go to for an interview, which, which is always not fitting your schedule because you have better things to do, but you have to do it. And uh, then you also get sometimes a, a shitty treatment uh, on top. Um, yeah, that's that's not the fun part. But once you are inside uh, 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 United States or Canada, and Canada is for anyway way less difficult than United States uh, for for with all these things. But once you're inside, it's a lot of fun. But yeah. all that 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 uh, that extra paperwork and everything that needs to be organized, everything that you need to 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 
pay uh, all the all the time people to to find out what uh, what the rules are and uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, a lot of work. Yeah, they they don't make it easy for uh, for bands to come in and share their art over here in North America. It sucks. It's a shame. Like, I mean, I remember going to Europe a couple of years ago and like it was super easy for the most part. And then I mean, even us having to go to to, to America just it's it becomes so expensive. Like, and I love and there was a lot of talk. Um, that I I don't know if there was any validity to it, but. Uh, there was some grumblings around the internet and people sharing like that. Uh, oh, the United States might drop, you know, some of their uh, the, the drop some of the visa costs so that uh, international bands can go tour there more, and that would be so great because like there's so many, so much more great bands, so many more great bands from Europe that we'd love to see over here, and it just sucks that like yeah. the financial burden of it is just too hard. And I mean, even you know, you were saying that like you, in your case, like okay, well, at least you guys you have your you you have your man that can help you. You know, find the loopholes and you know get it done in the most uh, uh, the most financially efficiently way possible. Um, yeah. But at the same time, yeah. like if we look at like what happened with you guys the last time, it's like you know you spend all this money to come over here and then you're over here and then something happens and like oh shit. yeah you know? yeah that was, that was terrible and yeah yeah we we lost uh, a lot of money with that that's for sure but also so many fans they were looking so much forward to it and mm-hmm. uh, and it doesn't happen. But above all, uh, uh, luckily, Simone's father, who was uh, at that time in a critical situation, uh, it was uh, you possibly wouldn't make it, and uh, even the chance was big that he wouldn't make it. So she 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 made the only right decision, I think, yeah. which was flying back. And uh, they they said also in the hospital only uh, less than ten percent of the people with the same. Uh, uh, the problem what happened to him uh make it really so, yeah so holy shit very happy yeah yeah i mean you know when i found out about it i was like oh my god like okay you know obviously it makes sense that she goes i didn't know it was that grave of a situation that uh at the time that's yeah. wow it's messed up well yeah, it was really but uh well we were all very happy that uh when we got the good news, even though we first we were waiting for uh, if if she could come back, and then uh, then we uh, sort of moment we had to decide all to to fly home because yeah, stayed on un- insecure and uh, the situation was in the beginning not improving. Yeah, it was it was a big it was a really sad situation, but uh, but the most important is is health of your family, of course. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and then what? Uh, luckily, we could also make it up already to. Uh, by, by doing uh, redoing a lot of dates uh, around to the metal cruise, but yeah, still right. we couldn't we couldn't do the West Coast. So still, even that pissed people off. They say, "Why do you come to the East Coast, not to the West Coast?" But yeah, it was that was just squeezed in a tight schedule that we had already. Yeah. So now finally in November we can do come back to do it all. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was really happy that I got to see the. Uh, I mean, the last show, like you know, the Montreal show was the last one you guys did before. Uh, before everything stopped and and it was you know not to rub it into everybody that didn't see it but it was fucking great like that was the biggest stage show that i've ever seen you guys bring with yeah. you in, ter- in terms of production uh this one coming up are you guys going to bring like a similar light show and this similar kind of like big uh, big production yeah yeah we we definitely are investing in, in, a, in a big light show and uh, it's actually it's new p- prototypes of lights and uh, mm. it's it's uh, yeah it's, it's something really unique but still, the, the the we are not 100% sure yet if we can bring them because it's new and there have always been deals to be signed and uh, import uh, because it's, it's a French product. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the <laughs> the, the laws and legislations are again going to be a uh, pain in the ass and, and, and that in the end we cannot bring these but even if we cannot bring these then there will be an alternative to still have a great light show yeah dude i saw i saw sabaton playing at heavy mtl like a couple weeks ago and they brought their fucking tank with them you guys are going to be yeah. able to bring whatever the hell you want don't worry about it if they can bring a <laughs> tank <laughs> yeah. if they if they say no yeah. to any of your light shows and any of your stuff we revolt and that's i'm calling for that right now Cool deal. <laughs> uh, how many how many new songs do you guys think you're going to be playing on the on this tour on this North American run? Uh, actually, we don't know yet. We we're gonna play now for the first time on the F Metal Fest uh, new tracks and 
we have to see which ones uh, uh, the crowd like the most. And uh, then we have to start thinking about uh, getting a set list together. It's coming up. Don't yeah, sit on it too uh, long. But it's kind of cool that you get to uh, you get to test drive them out at uh, the Epic Metal Fest. So that's cool. Good. Get a feel for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure you're going to have a couple of rotators too. Like, it's like, okay, well, maybe we'll test this one up for a couple of shows, a couple of that, you know. Yeah, because we don't want to do the, the same set list uh, each, each evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to keep it uh, exciting for fans and for ourselves as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, man. Uh, okay, listen, I got one more question for you before uh, I yeah. let you go. Um, I mean, you mentioned before when you were when we were talking about writing that you're you know you're out you're in this band Mayan also where you're the singer, but just the singer. You don't have a guitar <laughs> hindering you or anything like that. Um, I, I just kind of thought of this question last minute, but I really wanted to ask like, what do you do? You, do you feel like a lot more liberated being like, when you're fronting Mayan, not having the guitar and being able to? run around and being a little more expressive or like do you have a preference not in band yeah. not band wise but just like from a from a performance standpoint i must say i like both and uh it's, i need also say that. <laughs> I <can't admit. laughs> but the reason for that is when you uh, it's the same with summer festivals and club shows people say what you prefer and i say it's both because after a, a long summer of uh summer festivals you you're desiring club shows and it's the same with this mm. when i did when i do many shows with epica i i really start start desiring to do a show with mayan and have just a microphone and and do something different and um, that that's the thing so i think if you if i would have to choose with a gun on my head and uh, make it uh, make that the decision uh, what i like most and it's probably uh, having the guitar and, and sing. Uh, because the, when the attention goes to Simona, the front woman, I can sometimes also hide myself a bit behind the guitar. When you are the front singer, all the time you ha are having the attention. And uh, yeah, I love that, but not, not uh, always. <laughs> Examining every single move you make and dissecting every yeah, mistake you make, every false note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer have, though i like that <laughs> you have a lot of responsibility and uh, and uh, and once 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 something goes wrong and uh, there's silence you are the one to keep the show going mm -hmm. <laughs> and you it's have to you, come man. up with something yeah <laughs> so you like passing the buck off to simone basically just like hey, go for yeah, it wrap that crowd up <laughs> i like to disappear <laughs> Simone, they're throwing bottles. Help! <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's something went wrong. Ah, <laughs> uh, great. Okay, so uh, when's okay? What's the date of the new record coming out again? Thirty uh, September, at, at least in uh, in Europe. I don't know if it's worldwide the same. Uh, about a month. Uh, yeah, yeah, about a month. All right. So uh, quickly, let's just shout out like your website, your Facebook, so people know where to go find you guys if they want to check you when they want if they want to check you out online, which is the way they can get all the information. Yeah, the, the, the website is epica.nl, and the, the Facebook, uh, I think Facebook slash epica, but actually I, I have no idea. Oh uh, yeah, if you just <laughs> type in epica into the search, it's going to show up. Yeah, they, they will find us. It's the, the logo with snake at the moment, mm -hmm. white logo with snake. They will find us. Awesome. All right, so that's a holographic on Instagram and uh, yeah, and Twitter and uh, the whole bunch of of nonsense. Yeah. Use that one. <laughs> okay, for everybody listening, use that wonderful tool called Google. Type in Epica and add yourself yeah. to absolutely everything. Uh, if you haven't already, go check out uh, go check out the new single, uh, the Universal Death Squad. That's out on YouTube. Go check them out online. Uh, go. Be sure to check them out on the North American tour. Check them out on Facebook and whatnot for all the dates. The Holographic Principle out in about a month from now on Nuclear Blast Records. Mr. Mark Jensen, thanks so much for spending the time to talk with us. We really appreciate it here at Bucketless Music Reviews, and we hope to see you very soon. Thank you too, Paul. It was a pleasure.